Bird to the Wise. I'm here today with Stacy Lynn from Hover Farms. My name is Dr. Jackie Berry, and I want her to share with us all of the wonderful things that they do here at Hover Farms, located right here in Germantown. And it's been here for how many generations? For six generations. Oh my gosh. I can't handle it. I love that kind of history. It's like an institution. Yeah. So tell us about what you do. So first of all, how did you get a hold of the farm? You married your husband? Right. Okay. So um, I married my husband, James, in 2016. Okay. Um, and then we took over the farm. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then we took over the farm after that. Uh, yeah. James's grandparents had run the farm before that. Yeah. Um, and James is the sixth generation of his family to live here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it's a good thing he was interested in it. Yes. You know, yes. it's like what you always hear about families and maybe somebody doesn't want to pursue the same thing. Right. But I think it's lovely if a family can develop a passion for it. Absolutely. Going all the way down through all the generations. That's right. fantastic. Okay, so what do you guys do? So we raise grass-fed beef. Yes. Um, we have a registered Angus and registered Devons. Um, so we also sell breeding stock from our cows as, lo as well as the beef. Um, we also have a registered Katahdin uh, sheep flock. We sell lamb and we also sell breeding stock from the sheep flock. So when you say grass fed, that means that you don't give them any, um, I guess, artificial Grain. or supplemental? Right, right. They don't okay. get supplement. So what the way that we feed is they graze on pasture and we okay. do rotational grazing yep. um, all year long. And then during the winter, when there's not enough grass, we feed baleage. And what baleage is, is fermented hay. Okay. So okay. they still don't get any grain or any kind of supplement. They do get a mineral supplement to yeah. make sure that their diet is balanced. Yep. Um, but other than that, it's uh, just a natural diet. Okay. Just yeah. a funny question. Fermented hay, do they get drunk off of that? No. <laughs> it's not like horses eating apples. No. <laughs> All right. I just had to ask. Okay. So that's wonderful. So um, what else do you guys do? I mean, you do, you do, do grass-fed beef, but mm -hmm. you do other stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we have the, the chicken flock as well. Um, we do... <laughs> We do all kinds of things to the chicken flock. Um, we sell our eggs. Um, our chicken flock is free range and they're also uh, grass pasture raised. Okay. So during the summer months, they're out on pasture with the cows. Okay. Um, we sell the eggs from the flock. We also hatch our own eggs from the flock. And then we also sell the, um, the chicks that we hatch. So when you say sell them, mm -hmm. do you, um, have them like distributed in grocery stores or do people come here nope. and say I want a dozen eggs? Yeah, so what we have here on the farm oh, is I'm a self-serve freezer. Right <laughs> I'm okay. So you have a self-serve freezer? We have a self-serve freezer. Yep. So it's full of our own uh, beef and lamb and uh, chicken and eggs. So everything that we raise right here yep. um, is filled in our freezer and um, the local community just stops by and grabs some eggs and leaves cash in a box. <laughs> and you would never know that we're what you know 75 miles north of new york city i know it's a totally different world <laughs> and we're like leaving cash in a jar because we're so trusted honor that's, system yeah that's yeah. amazing that's amazing okay so when you say that the chickens graze with the beef um they don't ever get stepped on do they no okay chickens are smart okay they stay out of the way are they okay well chickens are great poop spreaders they're fertilizers mm -hmm. So if we have the cows or the sheep out in the pasture, yeah. if we follow them with the chickens, the chickens get in there and spread all the and poop all around the and it helps the grass grow greener and more nutritious. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, I'd have to imagine they control the tick population. Yes. Too. Yep. Yep. They help with bugs. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Okay. All right. Excellent. I would love to grow chickens, but maybe in another life <laughs> or something like that. Okay. So talk to me about your goat population. Okay. So we also have um, a little goat herd. Um, they are all pets, and uh, what How many do you have? we have nine, and uh, okay. what they're all sizes and all ages, yeah. and we actually host goat yoga classes mm -hmm. here on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds kind of silly. Um, I thought it was kind of silly when a friend proposed it to me yeah. um, to do it uh, last year. We started it, um, but it actually is really fun if you if you get into it. Yeah. Um, it's so we have a teacher come here to the to the farm a yoga teacher okay. and it's an hour long class. So you're not also a yogi? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, I, that's one thing I, I, I love to do yoga, but I am not a teacher. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and she teaches an hour long class. It's not like, um, it's savasana. So it's very basic okay, stretching okay, type okay. of yoga. And while you're doing yoga, the goats are in the room with you. So we do it up in the hayloft yeah. and the goats are being goats. They're running around and they're nibbling on your shirt. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's fun. And, and, and people are, well, I'm assuming they come here for that experience. Yes. They obviously yes. don't care that their shirts are getting nibbled on. No, no, no. Yep. 
backs are getting jumped on. It's a, it's animal therapy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to think of it. So I just want to go back to the chickens sure. and you talking about them grazing with the um, the beef. I'm assuming you guys don't use like any type of pesticides or whatever. No, in your grass. no, no. All of our uh, methods here are natural and sustainable. Natural and sustainable. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And how many chickens do you have? So there's 27 in our laying flock plus our rooster Rolo. He is the man. Okay. <laughs> One guy with 27 chickens. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, and believe it that and and um, that is a lot of chickens for one rooster, um, but he does cover them pretty well. So we okay. haven't needed to get another rooster yet. And okay. I say that based on my um, my hatching rate, with the, the the eggs that I hatch from our from our flock. Okay. So I have a pretty good hatching rate. So he has a pretty good fertility. He's pretty good fertility. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Stud. <laughs> Um, okay, so then how many, if you've got 27, and um, I want to know how many eggs they produce per week, and then how many of those are bought by local consumers who come here? So we get about 10 dozen eggs a week out of our chickens. That's 120. I'm it's sorry, about 120. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be even more. Okay, yeah. so it's 120. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of eggs. Yeah. And then how many get bought? All of them, unless so unless I'm saving them for 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 uh, hatching. So they're quite in demand. Yeah. So enough bragging. <laughs> it's time for you to teach people what they would do if they wanted to have their own backyard hen. <laughs> what is the very first thing they would do, and then what is the very second thing they would do? <laughs> well, the very first thing they would do is figure out what breed they want. Okay. So they need to figure out um, what type of chicken mm -hmm. would do best for. Uh, where the chicken's going to be living, mm -hmm. um, and what type of chicken would work west, best for them. So um, some chickens are more suited to cold weather, mm -hmm. some are more suited to warm weather. Mm -hmm. um, some chi chicken breeds are known to be more social, mm -hmm. some are more flighty. Okay. So that also depends on how much you're going to be handling the chickens. Um, if you're just going to let them graze and leave them alone, um, then you don't really need a chicken that's very docile. Okay. But if it's going to be part of the family and your kids are going to be handling chickens and they're, you're going to be touching them a lot, um, then you want a breed that's known to be uh, more docile and social. Right, yeah. right. Um, this is a very novice question, but it, when it comes to the eggs and also the meat, do the different breeds taste a lot different from one another? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Yep. Okay. Um, there is a big difference between if you're um, if you're cooking an actual meat breed chicken mm -hmm. or if you're cooking a layer chicken. Okay. Yeah, just because the the body types are different sure. and the way that they put on weight and the way that they um, maintain themselves is different, so it's going to affect the taste. I have to imagine the layer chicken, and please correct me if I'm wrong, have more fat. The layer chickens do not. The meat really? birds have more fat. Yes. See? <laughs> the layer chickens are very lean. <laughs> you learn something every day. Wow. Yep. Okay. The layer chickens' energy all goes, goes towards making the egg. So there's so no extra. So they're not they're not really storing a lot. I mean, they'll store enough to keep themselves warm and comfortable, yeah. but their their energy is going towards producing eggs to to grow the flock yeah. as their instinct is. Yeah. Whereas meat birds, their energy is only going towards putting on weight. So once they figure out what breed and whether mm -hmm. or not they're going to be handling it mm -hmm. and treating it like a pet versus you know, lay, 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 or whatever it is. Right. They do some research and figure out their needs. How many mm -hmm. do you recommend they start with? It depends on if they have a rooster or not. Okay. Um, so chickens are flock animals. They yep. don't like to be alone. Okay. So if you're not going to have a rooster, I would, um, you could have even two or three and they'll be fine. Um, okay. But they need to feel the safety of the group. Okay. Um, I would never just have one chicken because that, that will um, mentally and emotionally stress the chicken out. Okay. Um, they need to feel that safety in numbers. Okay. Um, if you're having a rooster, I would recommend at least four to five hens. Okay. Um, and then uh, a rooster itself normally can be eight to 10 hens mm -hmm. um, per rooster. Mm -hmm. I mean, our guy is an overperformer, but. <laughs> Clearly, 27. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I would uh, do at least four or five if you're going to have a rooster. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So two or three if you don't have a rooster, four or five if you. So do they um, lay at a different rate if there's a rooster present versus when there's not? No, they're always going to lay an egg. A Just healthy chicken a will always lay an egg a day. An yeah. egg a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how long does the laying process take? Um, so it, it takes about 24 hours. Um, no, but what I mean is like, do they just, you know, like lay when they, or does it take like two hours? Okay, so that varies on chicken. Okay. okay. They're, they're all different. Um, s some of our girls will go in the laying box yeah. first thing in the morning and they'll sit in there for hours 
and they'll just chill and they'll talk to their friends and they'll see everybody that goes in and out. And then finally they'll lay an egg and go on their way. Uh, some of our girls will pop in there in 10 minutes, pop out. I, it's, it's, it's a pair. It it's, just depends it's, on the chicken. It's really individual. Yeah, it is. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they figured out the breed mm -hmm. and then the person has to decide whether or not they want a rooster. I'm assuming that they need to stick with a rooster. That's also of a, of an appropriate breed that Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can stick with a rooster of the same breed as your hens yeah. or go with a different breed. That doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. What matters is that obviously the temperament of the rooster yeah. Um, yeah. to make sure, cause some, some rooster breeds tend to be a little more aggressive than others. Yeah. Um, some grow bigger than others, some grow smaller. Yeah. Um, so that's something you really want to research. You also want to make sure that you can have a rooster where you are. Right. Cause some people uh, live in like developments or they live in areas where the town has said no knows. roosters yeah. and the neighbors don't want the rooster. So yeah. always make sure that you can have a rooster where you are. Okay, so they figured out the breed, they figured out what they want from it, they figured out um, the, the rooster and the rooster breed and whether or not their town ordinances are even going right. to allow it, yeah. then what do they do? Um, so then they need to set up a space for their, for their chickens once they figured out exactly what they want and how many they want. So is it a, um, well it also depends on whether or not they're going to be roaming around, yep. right? Yep. Okay. yep. So let's say that they have a big enough space where the rooster's going to be roaming around and like eating bugs and whatever else. Um, is it a per chicken square foot kind of situation for the indoor space? Right. So within the coop, I would have at least a square foot per chicken. Foot per Most chicken. people do more space than that. Okay. Um, but that's the very minimum just to make sure that everybody has space to move around and you don't have any um, fighting or pecking issues. How do you go about getting a veterinarian for like checkups and stuff? So um, it is very hard to get vets to look at chickens. Uh, there is not really a lot of large animal vets that will look at chickens. Um, there are some around, you can find them, uh, but, it's, but, it's, but it's hard. So the best thing is, is just educate yourself so that you can take care of your own flock. That's what we do. And then what kind of material should they have in the actual indoor space? So some people use um, like straw. Mm -hmm. Some people use uh, pine shavings. Mm -hmm. um, either one is fine. Um, okay. I prefer pine shavings because it's a little bit cleaner mm -hmm. um, and it's easier to clean up for me. Yeah. Um, I find that the bedded pack, um, w which means just stacking the hay, the straw up gets mm -hmm. to be a little much to handle during mm -hmm. the winter. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people do it. Um, but when you do a bedded pack like that, where you just keep turning it over, you have to make sure you're doing that because sometimes the, the, the smell gets, the ammonia smell gets too strong gets in the coop. Too, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then how do you keep them safe from predators? So the best way is to know what predators you have around your area. Okay. Um, because all predators are different. They yeah. come after chickens differently. Yeah. Um, we have owls that will come down and grab them. Um, and hawks. We also have uh, weasels that will try to get through the fence to get really? them. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, so what we do for that, because we do put our chickens out on pasture, uh, what we have is um, netting. Okay. It's electric netting. Okay. And so we move the chickens and mm -hmm. then we put the netting around them mm -hmm. and then we hook that up to a, a source where we can power the electric. Okay. And that keeps the, the predators, it's not really to keep the chickens in, it's to keep, it's the, to predators keep the predators out. out. Yeah. yeah. How long of a laying lifespan will they have? So normally it's about two to three years. Okay. There are chickens that lay much longer than that. I know somebody who has a chicken who's six years old that's still laying. Wow. So it just uh, depends on um, your observation of the chicken, yeah. how healthy she is, yeah. and the breed affects it too. Some, some okay. breeds lay longer than other breeds. Mm -hmm. um, so the minimum is two years, the very minimum. Okay. Um, the, but it can go much longer than that depending on the chicken. Okay, yeah. okay. And um, do people get like attached and decide that they don't want to eat them? Or totally, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's lots of yeah. pet chickens out there. Yeah. Yes, that aren't really laying anymore, but they're kind of part of the family. So yeah, yeah. they just so stay around they... until they die of old age. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then, how long is that? So if they if they lay for approximately well, a minimum of two years, then mm -hmm. how long is their lifespan after they? Um, it again depends on the breed and the health of the chicken. Okay. Um, but I've seen chickens live as long as seven or eight years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking oh, with welcome. me today. That was a lot of fun. Now I want to see <laughs> sure. beginning to end how we would go about actually raising hens and chickens on our property for breeding, for laying eggs, and for eating.
talk to us about these chicks. Okay. They look really, really young and extremely cute. I think I'm going to have a cuteness overload attack or something. <laughs> um, how old are they and what is their setup like? Okay, so uh, these chicks in here are two days old. Um, they hatched uh, wow. in our own incubator. Um, and <laughs> their setup, uh, what we use actually is a little bit different than most. We don't use heat lamps. Okay. Um, just because our buildings are very old mm -hmm. um, and heat lamps are too much of a fire risk yeah. in the barns. Um, yeah. So what we actually use is brooder plates. Okay. Um, and, and that's what this that's is right what, here. That's what these are right here. Yeah. Um, underneath is a, is a metal plate that's regulated to uh, 99 degrees. Okay. And then it, it also gives the chick the feeling of being under a mother right, hen. Right, right. So it right. gives that secure feeling. Um, yeah. It's more natural for them. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not a fire risk to our buildings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And yeah. then this is, um, what are these, wood shavings? Yes. They're mm -hmm. just regular pine shavings. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have their water and their food available. Um, and they go with the natural daylight. We always put it under a window so they can go with the natural light cycle just like the adults do. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, how long, well, how many do you have? So there's 30 in this group. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of them are under yeah, here? They're under here. Yeah, they're under here. like 10 over there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep, they're all staying warm underneath. Yeah. I'm it's assuming there's a difference between, you know, winter and summer, how much they spend, how much time they spend underneath the brooder plates. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, right now, when it's still, like, especially today, it's a little bit cold, colder. Yeah. So most of the group will be underneath. But during the summer, they'll hardly ever be under there. They'll yeah. mostly be out eating and, and, and drinking and playing. Okay. Yeah. And how long do they stay in this enclosure? Two weeks. Two weeks. They mm -hmm. are in here for two weeks, and then they graduate to the bird pen in the barn, which I have some juveniles in right now so we can see the next phase. Excellent. So do yeah. you sell them when they're this small? Mom? I will, yes. Okay. Yep. Um, I sell all life stages, so I'll sell them as just hatched chicks. I'll also sell them as juveniles, are also called pullets, so I'll sell them as pullets. Mm -hmm. um, or once in a while, I'll be able to sell uh, some adults too. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so it just really depends on what the person's looking yeah, for. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just depends what they're looking for. And yeah. how much is a chick like this? So I sell these for three fifty a piece. And is this the, the barred rock species? Yes. Okay. So they're three fifty a piece. Mm -hmm. Three dollars and fifty cents. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, just making sure. Yes. <laughs> you know, we're talking about breeding and all this right, stuff. Right. Right. Um, okay. Okay. Good. And then how long before they are? So they're here for two weeks, and how long before they are um, full size, and then how long before they are ready to start laying? So they'll spend another two to three weeks in the bird pen as yeah. pullets, yeah. Um, and then they get to a decent enough size where they can go out with the adults and meld into the flock. Okay. Um, and there's an introductory process um, to introduce well, yeah, new birds into new the flock. flock. Yeah. 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 Um, and at six months is about the average time that they start laying. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's not so bad. And that varies too, depends on, depending on breed, because some of the smaller breeds tend to start uh, producing eggs sooner than yeah. the larger breeds. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so when do barred rocks start producing eggs? Um, ours are usually about 24 to 28 weeks. What is the process to introduce them to the... So the way that the, the best way to do it is when the existing flock is on their roosting bars and ready to go to sleep for the night. And oh, really? the way that we do it is it's almost trying to trick them into thinking that they were already there. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So I have, um, it's like a large dog kennel. Yeah. Um, and I wait till our flock goes, is ready to go to sleep. Yeah. Um, then I take the new birds and I set them up in the kennel um, yeah. with food and water and shavings. Yeah. Um, and I leave them in there overnight. And then yeah. when the, the adult, the existing flock comes yeah. down off the roost in the morning, the chickens are already there. And there's a lot, believe it or not, it works. And there's a lot less chance of them picking on the other birds or fighting um, ah, because they just wake up with the new chickens there. They just wake there. up when they're there. Yeah, so like, right. hey. Whereas if you were just yeah. in the middle of the day and they yeah. were hanging out, if you just put new chickens out there, they would probably attack the new chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then who does the, um, the gender checking? For the chickens, right? Chicken right. sexing is a notoriously difficult problem. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, some breeds are easier to tell than others. Yeah. One of the reasons that I like barred rocks is because yeah. it's easier to tell the gender on them. Um, okay. Because the females get dark colored legs. Oh, the males okay, do okay. not. Oh, okay, uh, so okay. sometimes you could tell a little sooner with barred rocks than yep. with other breeds. Yep. Um, but it does take a while to be able to tell to the difference. Able, yeah, it, yeah. Takes, it takes a yep. long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, which is so why cute. a lot of the times you have to buy chicks a straight run because there's really no way to tell whether they're male or female it's that young. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So the last time I was here, which was a month or less ago, these were as small as those baby chicks that we just looked at. Look how much bigger they are. 
These are juveniles and they're soon going to be ready. So this is the middle stage of the life, pro life process. They're soon going to be ready to merge in with the rest of the flock. Look how gigantic they grew in just 30 days. <laughs> it's amazing. So um, at this point, they're teenagers. Yes. Okay. Yes, they're teenagers. Yeah. And what do they do? What kind of needs do they have that's different than the chicks, the babies? So at this stage, they need to be able to get up on higher perches. Okay. Um, so their instinct to, to get up off the ground has really kicked in. Yep. Um, so in here, we give them several spaces to do that. Yep. Um, we give them a little brood bar. We give them a spool. Yep. There's a, a, this pen they can get up on and the hay rack. Um, yep. So there's lots of ways for them to get off the ground and exercise that instinct. Mm -hmm. um, and that gets them practicing for when they go in with the uh, the ex existing adult flock. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. They also obviously eat and drink a lot more. Yeah. Um, so the the way that we feed them changes too. So it must be a big transition to go from not having to, from having a brooder play to not having a brooder play. For yes. Them. Do you think so? Yes. Yeah. Um, they get to a point when they hit two weeks over there where they're yeah. actually almost too big to get under it. Uh, um, okay, and they start okay. sleeping on top of it. Okay. So once they start sleeping on top of it, that's another sign for me that they're ready to come to the yeah. to the big bird pen in the barn. Yeah. Yeah. And how many um, birds have you incubated? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just count just here at Over Farms. A lot. <laughs> So in three years, you've done. I've I've uh, created a lot of babies. Wow, so prolific. <laughs> That's amazing. The chickens have created, and I have helped them along. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Sure. It's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yes. Excellent. And this age, they're starting to get to the point where I'll be able to tell um, which ones are roosters and which ones are hens. So our, our one big guy, Rolo, will have some other roosters. Yeah. In some, well, they're called cockerels at this right, age right, right. Um, yeah. to, to be in his space. So. Okay. Yeah, because there's definitely at least two or three in here. Okay. Yeah. I don't know a lot about the chicken's sense of smell, but can he smell that there's other roosters over They're more of a visual, okay. um, visual okay. animal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Like the hens will always choose the, the rooster that has like the yellowest beak and the reddest comb right. and the shiniest feathers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, makes sense. Yeah. He obviously takes care of himself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're healthy. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, and so from here, these birds will transition to um, the adult flock, whether yes. they're during the winter if they're here at the barn, or in the spring or in, in summer if they're out in the pasture. Yeah, yeah. Is this their um, this is their food? Yep, yep. So that's a grower crumble, yep. um, and then they so it's a bigger uh, feeder than the yeah. little chicks have, and then they have a bigger water or two. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I always hang it so that uh, they don't kick so much sawdust into it. Right. Yeah, it keeps the food cleaner. And the water is up on a brick so it keeps it cleaner. Okay, so this is the goal stage. Yeah. Where you've got productive laying hens, like you mm -hmm. have two right here, mm -hmm. sitting in there. Are they bothered by us sitting here in there? Nope. Not at all. Okay. Okay. They're just hanging out. Yeah. If they were bothered, they would get up and go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So they would not tolerate. No. You know, no. If we were disturbing their process, they would leave. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how old are these? You got 27. How yeah. old are these? So they're uh, range in age anywhere from a year to three years. Okay. Yeah. And. <laughs> no, she's objecting. <laughs> Is that the sound they make when they're not happy? Yeah, she's a little annoyed that we're standing here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And each one goes in there and lays mm -hmm. approximately one a day? Yep, one a day. Good, good. Yep. And then what kind of food and water needs do these guys have? I see that that's, is that their food right so, there? So this is oyster shell. Oh, um, so what yep. this provides is calcium yep. um, and grit if they don't get enough outside. So um, they just go in there and just pick as needed? Yeah, they just pick at it as okay. they need it. Okay. Um, they also get um, a pellet form of layer feed. Yep. Um, that is uh, a natural layer feed, so there's yeah. no added um, colors or preservatives okay. to okay. their food. Um, it's just all natural ingredients. Yeah. Um, and then they have um, a, a nipple waterer that they can drink from. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And, and then... that keeps it cleaner having the water. Okay. So then. So then when you're introducing a juvenile or, an, or a new, mm -hmm. 
Is this where you put them? So I'll actually put the, the, the kennel that I was referring to, yeah. I'll put it right here. Okay. And I'll wait for all the girls to get up on, on here and, yes. and the rooster, and they'll all just be ready to go to sleep, yeah. and I'll just kind of sneak that in right here. Yeah. And then when they get up in the morning, they'll come down and investigate. They'll still talk to each other between yeah. the, the, the gate and the openings yeah. of the kennel. Um, and then when everybody has stopped paying attention to it, that's when I'll let the juveniles out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And okay. it just seems to work pretty well that way. Yeah. And this is also, um, which Same ones? shavings. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's just easier to clean. Yes. It's easier. Yeah. In my opinion, it's easier to clean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then how many, um, pounds do these chickens work? These chickens are anywhere between six and eight about. Okay. They're pretty light. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I, I don't even know now that I think about it. Cause normally when you buy chicken, you buy chicken meat, you buy it in like the different sections. So right. I don't even know right. what an average size right. chicken is now that I think about it. Right. But you're saying six to eight pounds, relatively light. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they look heavier than they actually are if you yep. get down underneath the feathers. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Our meat birds can, can range anywhere from um, five to eight pounds at processing. So, okay. Um, that's an average size for them too. But yeah. that's, even though they're the, almost the same weight, they're made up of much more meat and fat than the layers are. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you do sell the grown up birds, right? Yeah, once in a while I will. I sell a yeah. lot more um, babies and juveniles than okay. I do adults, but once yeah. in a while I'll sell some adults, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, Depends on the time of year and how much I need eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is excellent. Well, thank you so much, Stacy Lynn. It has been my pleasure learning about this whole process. I think it's fun. I now want chickens. My husband's not going to agree to it. But, um, <laughs> It looks like a lot of fun. It looks like a great, for you it's a job, but yep. for most people who don't live on a farm, it would be, I guess, it's like very a, rewarding. a hobby. It's very rewarding. Yeah. 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 It's fun. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming.